I got involved with these floors about 10 years ago, something like that, and uh, we haven't laid that many, but um, this introductory shot, what I wanted to do is extol the virtues of limestone. And this is Stamford, I don't know if it's low Stamford at all, uh, it's near, near me, and it's one of the most beautiful stone-built towns in the country. Um, it sits on the limestone bed, which stretches up from Dorset up to Lincolnshire and into Yorkshire, I think. Um, and Stamford is almost like it is. It's grown out the ground. All the stone is directly underneath it. And around there is some of the most famous quarries out, the Barnacks, the Clipshams, Kettons, Ancasters. There's some really fantastic uh, old quarries. Um, and it was just really to say that for this one material, that out of the quarry came the building stones, uh, to build the actual uh, houses with, to uh, the, the stones which you could dress for the coins and the mullions and the window traceries in churches, from the roofs themselves, which are Collie Western slates, um, from the stone flags uh, for the floors and to the pavements, all from this one material as a raw material. And then when you burn it, you end up uh, with, uh, with um, uh, putties to make, uh, your for your mortars, your plasters, your renders, and your washes. And it's, it's a unique material, it's a fantastic material. To think, all, you can actually build your house virtually from, from that one stone. Um, I love it, and I think that's probably you know, why we're, we do what we do. Um, by adapting that uh, limestone slightly, you end up with a lime concrete. Um, which the Romans introduced us, uh, the lime generally, the lime, the lime as we know it today, um, but by adding pots of limes, or as we now we know we can get um, lime with um, clay in it, which when you burn it creates a natural hydraulic lime. Um, but the, just, just to show that there's, there's a bit of Roman concrete, over a thousand years old. So we're not doing anything really new when it all comes down to it, we're just actually sort of relearning how to use it. So it's there, have a look, it's quite amazing. It's come from a villa not far from me, came from a, a hyper course to, uh, of that villa, and that was excavated while there was digging, digging out a swimming pool. I thought it was, the irony, irony was quite nice there, it was sort of, the whole thing worked in very well. So limestone, what a wonderful material. This is a project uh, I got involved with, with a partner of my answer about, I don't know, best part of 10 years ago now, I suppose. And this is a, um, a condemned um, Georgian farmhouse, which is going to be demolished. Um, they, the conservation officer stopped um, that happening. I think she put an um, a urgent works notice on it. And it went to auction and we bought it to try and sort of put Spab's philosophy and everything else uh, together, see if we could actually repair this building, um, you know, back to its former glory. It was condemned by most people, but it we knew we could actually do something with it. This was um, a bakehouse added on to the end, which we eventually would knock through and form into a kitchen. So that was the basis of our, that was our starting point. And uh, just above here, which I'll touch on a bit later, is a gypsum plaster floor. But anyway, we're con concerned about down here at the moment. So I should repeat what James has said in lots of cases. The once we decided that we were going to put a lime creek floor in here, you have to start thinking about design. Um, it's no use saying, well, I'm just going to do it. You've got to know fundamentally where your foundations are. You can't just go digging down and digging the floor out and, and saying, oops, I'm gone well below the foundation level. What am I going to do now? So it has to be thought about. It has to be thought about what you need from your, uh, your, your lime creek floor. Um, how much insulation? Do you want it a warm floor, um, which comes up to current building regs, uh, which would be on this level here, say? Um, you're going to put a lime creek slab on top of that. Is it going to be a load-bearing wall? Because you may have to thicken up the, uh, the, the slab itself. You may have to reinforce it. Um, are you going to put underfloor heating in? Uh, if you're going to do that, that's fine. Then you're going to need that probably 75 mil uh, screen over the top. And then you're going to have to decide what... Uh, topping you're going to put on. Um, I have concerns maybe about what James was saying about screening it and getting the finish on there. It's still a fairly soft material at the end of the day. Point loadings probably wouldn't like it that much, but it may well be an option which I haven't actually explored yet. 
most of our floors have been with brick, flags or tiles. So design is, is uh, very important when you start considering um, your floor. This is going back a bit and it's one of the first done around our area so it may look a bit crude at times but this is how, how we, we did it. Um, what we've gone through before was the, the depths. So your design, once you know your foundation levels here which you can sort out by trial holds to sort out what depth they are then you can start to make a decision do I have to underpin, do I need to underpin or can I make do with what I've got and then you decide the depth uh, which is available and it may well be you haven't got a warm floor you may just have a breathable floor you might just put the limecrete slab in without all the additional benefits of, uh, of the leak aggregate that could be a choice um, if you want or having to comply with building regs and you've got to put this in that may, may cause you a few more problems but you could end up with something like 600 mil dig to get everything um, everything in from from your uh, from your leaker if you want 300 mil of that to a maximum maybe 150 mil slab a 75 mil screed plus your top it could well be quite a substantial dig so you may have to compromise on some of those things um, what else on that? Probably not. I've gone to the next one. Well, um, on this particular project, we were on sloping ground, and the bake house, which I mentioned, was going up the hill. And if and when we broke, if and when we break through from the original farmhouse into the bake house, we wouldn't have wouldn't be able to get in there. We even if we had to have a step to get up there into the, uh, the 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 floor finish we wanted. So we had to dig down. We had to uh, underpin, and that's what we did. We put it on a concrete foundation, but all the work from that was in line. Um, that was obviously designed by an engineer, structure engineer. So that was what we had to uh, carry out there. I'll go back to that again a bit, I think. I think there's another picture there which has gone missing, but nevertheless, um, and depending, as I'm sure you're aware, is a slow job, a metre at a time. A portion of brickwork, a portion of soil dug out, brickwork gone in, move on to another area, uh, probably round here somewhere, waiting for that to firm up before you take out the rest of the, uh, the soil underneath the brick. Slow process, expensive process, uh, but it's something we had to do. The materials come next, what materials are you going to use? At this stage when we were using it there wasn't uh, any option. Leaker, like uh, lightweight expanded um, clay aggregates, is not a trade name, it, it is just it describes the actual material. The trade names vary. I don't think you can buy OptiRock now, I think it's called MaxiFit. But same thing, different term, different promotion, so I've got the leaflet somewhere. Um, I'm not sure what some other companies call it, and there are, there are various products around which I'm beginning to find out, which I didn't know before. Leaker, Leaker and OptiRock are the only two um, um, terms I know, and at that time Leaker was um, owned and brought in by Castle Cement, which is a Heidelberg company, which I think now has been sold again. It was made in Spain then, I think it's made in Portugal now. And it is sort of um, clay balls spun in a rotary kiln at high temperature, which gives a ceramic sort of um, finish to the, uh, to the um, leaker itself. I don't think that's got the, um, yes, that sort of thing. And it's like a Maltese sort of thing in the, in the, in the middle, and this is where they sort of get their, their sort of lightweight bits and um, thermal properties from. They're special clays. Um, as you see on here, the alternatives could well be, um, I'll pass this around as well, recycled foam glass. I want to pass those, some of those around, which, um, which uh, as, a, as an alternative which we have at that level there. Um, your lime creek slab can be leaker, which is, um, leaker you can get, leaker at this point here is normally about 20 mil and it's coated. It has a coating, like a waterproof coating on it. Um, the, the, um, the shape of it and with the coating as well helps to um, make it Resistance to water, to dampness and moisture. The shape helped to prevent the capillary action taking place with uh, just because of the shape of things. So it is 
in a normal circumstance, circumstances, uh, is it a good product, as James said earlier. You have to, on your design, decide whether it's suitable for a, a Lime Creek floor. If it's, if it's um, got high water tables, then it's something you might probably just dismiss. You'll have to go down another route. So design stages is pretty important to decide exactly what you've got, um, whether you can have it, then your depth of your floors, and then, then go on to your materials, and then see what quantities of materials you can achieve. Um, so an alternative we just said is to that 20 mil coated uh, leaker onto your limecrete slab. Uh, they make different sizes of, um, of leaker. They go from 1 to 4 mil, 4 to 12 mil, and 12 to 20 mil. I think that's it. We've got it outside anyway. Um, so you can blend those two, the 4 to 10 and the 10 to 20. Uh, mix it with your lime, that 1 to 3 ratio, and that will make your, your slab a uh, limecrete slab. Or an alternative again is pumice, which is obviously a, um, a volcanic material which um, can be used in said, instead of the uh, leaker. So you do have options, and, but they, the costs will vary with, e with these options. That's something you have to sort of go into. Um, your underfloor heating goes in at that point too, on top of your slab. I've probably missed out a bit here with the, the, the tech geotextiles or we're using hessian now, it's a bit more friendly material. So you can use the geotextile or hessian onto the ground, onto, this, onto the surface, the compacted ground or the, the surface you've, you've dug out to save any, any sort of soil coming through, but it's not totally necessary. Um, it can go on top of your leaker or your other aggregate. Um, that just stops the two combining together. The, um, I'll go back up to the screen on top of there. Once you've got your, if you're having underfloor heating, I think it's like a 70, 75 mil um, lime screed going on there. That can be literally sharp sand and li um, lime again, or you can actually mix the leaker, the finer leaker, and, uh, and um, the hydraulic lime to have a, a complete system. You're going to get more thermal value out of the whole, that whole system, I would have thought, rather than... Uh, doing it how I've done it on hair. So you, if you want to cut costs, you could use sharp sand in lots of cases, or you can go into the, the proprietary materials here. Um, the other thing on the screen is um, glass. Uh, this is crushed glass, which is there they're using, um, again, uh, as a screen. It all comes at a cost, but nevertheless, it sort of will give you better thermal values. So it's quite a lot to sort out at the end of the day um, to get the best from your floor. A bit of homework needed, that's for sure. I can't give you all the answers. I can't give you all the prices. Prices are, um, prices are a nightmare. Nobody will tell you price on the phone. It's all negotiable, just about. And uh, on the quantities, your delivery. Um, so I, it's not, not much point going into it. We'll, we'll have information here which you can take away with you uh, regarding different... Um, uh, systems. There's a Silver Pearl here. There, uh, Timau do their own system. I haven't got one of those. Tim will have his own probably um, materials and what have you. So that's effectively the material. If you look at it, and from the building point of view, if you just think of it as what we what we do with a lime, an ordinary concrete system, you're not a million miles away. It's not a specialist job at the end of the day. It's just something you just we're, we're changing materials. And instead of putting membranes in, we're just having breaks of hessian. Um, instead of a concrete slab, we've got a limecrete slab. Instead of a, concrete, a cement screed, we've got a limecrete screed. And we've changed the aggregate from type 1 to two different materials there. On, on the basic, on, it's a very basic thing. It's nothing to be frightened of. You just sort of, um, all you're doing is tweaking things. A bit more care, a bit more time, a bit more awkward maybe. Uh, but other than that, it's, it's something which... Uh, can be done readily. Um, Leaker, um, it's, a, it's not the best materials for handling. Here, it's sort of in our dumpy bags and what have you, you have to shovel it out and it's not easy to shovel. Uh, it goes into barrows, we got fed up with barrows, we tried to make um, chutes to get it through the doorway to make it a bit more efficient, it's quite dusty. Um, so it's a, an awkward material. 
as you'll see when you're outside. We pegged that out, so we pegged out, pegged out. you can see where we've underpinned, there's actually line plastered on there because of whatever, I can't remember why we did it.